Ministers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, god, uh, vet du hva? God, uh, god eftermiddag. Uh, uh, det er hyggelig å være. Det er deilig å være norsk i Danmark. Uh, yeah. I, I, my impression is that many of you understand Norwegian. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, we do this in English. So, it's great to be here. Thank you for, for inviting me. And, uh, and last time I visited Copenhagen, I... Uh, I visited the, the Niels Bohr uh, Institute. Uh, uh, then uh, this uh, morning, we, uh, I attended together with the Prime Minister and, and the Ministers um, the, the Quantum Conference, and now I'm here at this uh, Deep Tech uh, Lab. Uh, so I think that demonstrates uh, the leading role uh, Denmark has uh, within uh, different types of uh, technology, uh, but also in particular when it comes to quantum and everything related to quantum computing. That's important for uh, Denmark, it's important for what to do uh, to develop new industries to address uh, climate change, energy and many other challenges. But it is also extremely important for uh, Denmark's uh, contribution to NATO and therefore we are extremely grateful that um, uh, uh, this new uh, deep tech lab, uh, Quantum, uh, will also uh, run and host and help us with uh, 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 the accelerator center for, uh, for NATO, the uh, part of our Diana uh, network. Uh, because NATO is and has been the most successful alliance in history for many reasons. Um, but the, what, because we have brought North America and Europe together, because we have uh, uh, been able to defend our values, but one of the reasons why NATO uh, is the most successful alliance in history is that we have been able to um, uh, keep a technological edge uh, against any potential adversary. Um, and that was, we mentioned that also this morning, that was partly also because of the work of Niels Bohr uh, related to uh, nuclear te uh, technologies. The challenge today is that this technological edge is challenged, partly because we see other nations, uh, in particular China, investing heavily in, in new technologies, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, quantum, uh, uh, big data, and many other technologies, autonomous systems. They're linking them together using data and then applying the, uh, these technologies into different uh, weapon systems and, uh, and military applications. Uh, this is a huge challenge, uh, and therefore NATO has to do more. And that's the reason why we have established uh, an innovation fund, and also why we uh, uh, decided uh, not so many years ago to establish uh, uh, the Defence Innovation Accelerator for the North Atlantic, or uh, DIANA. And then uh, this centre will uh, be part of that uh, uh, big uh, effort. Another uh, reason why actually NATO has to think in new ways uh, is that uh, for decades uh, it was the government, it was the defence ministries uh, uh, of NATO allies that actually were the driving force when uh, it came to developing technologies relevant for defense. Uh, uh, the, the jet engine was a child of uh, government efforts uh, in the 1930s and 1940s. Uh, the, the, the nuclear bomb, the, the atomic bomb, was very much a government-driven project, the whole Manhattan Project and everything related to that. And then there were spillovers later to the private sector of the jet engine and nuclear. And also internet, many other technologies, have been initiated by government efforts within the uh, Ministry of Defense, financed, run, and controlled by governments. Now this is totally different, because now the main technological innovations are taking place in the private sector, and few of them are specific defense-related. They are dual-use, dual-capable. And that means that, yes, we need to maintain the technological edge. And I'm just, I, I was in, uh, in Ukraine yesterday, and, and, and when you study that war, it's a kind of mixture of First World War trench warfare combined with extremely advanced technology, uh, thousands of drones, autonomous systems, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, cyber, uh, and also electronic uh, warfare. Um, and of course, to ensure that we are able then to deter and protect all allies, we need to uh, also manage all these new technologies in a more dangerous and unpredictable uh, world. And therefore, uh, we established Innovation Fund, we established DIANA, 
and we work across the alliance uh, to, uh, to, to, to connect together, to share best practices, uh, to, to learn from each other, uh, and to mobilize the, the, the total capacity of free democratic nations as Denmark and the other 31 NATO allies. Uh, uh, because uh, I'm absolutely certain that in the long run, open democratic societies are also the most resilient and the most innovative when it comes to uh, new technologies, as long as we're able to, uh, to work together. And that's the, you are an, an important part of that. Uh, I'm therefore honored to be here at this inauguration, uh, bringing uh, countries, uh, uh, companies, and innovators and science uh, together. Uh, I hope it's a lot of good business, but at least it's very important for our security. So thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.